In this video, we are going to take a look at some two-handed piano ideas. Basically, block chords. Things that you can do with two hands that make the melodies sound really, really nice, especially in ballads. And in this video, we're going to focus on the tune Spring Can Really Hang You Up The Most because, well, it's spring. So I'm going to give you basically four ideas that you can do with your hands over the same melody. So this is a great exercise and I'm going to share the sheet music with you a little bit later. Let's dive in and get started. So if you're not familiar with spring can really hang you up the most, I'm going to play a little bit of it for you and then we'll start to dive in and take a look at all of the different ways you can do these two-handed ideas. Okay, so I'm not going to play the whole thing for you, but what we're really focused on is this line which goes like this. So basically the first chord is a C major 7th. And the second chord is a G7 9 chord. So 9, 7, 5, and 3. And the reason why we're focused on that is because it's always a good idea as a jazz piano player to figure out new ways of playing melody. So the first thing that we're gonna do is these rootless voicings in the left hand. So what we're really focused on is these chords here. So these are called rootless voicings. And the goal with rootless voicings is to keep your hands from jumping around the piano. So in this particular case, we're gonna play a C major seven, then an A minor seven, then a D minor seven, then a G seven in force. So that last one is just force. And then to force on the E minor seventh chord. So just play the melody in the right hand. It's nice that the left hand doesn't bounce all over the place. So from the beginning, Okay, the second one, which is this one that you see on your screen here, this is a different take on two-handed voicings where you're basically playing these open voicings and I've basically put the chord at the top here. So what you're doing is you're playing the root of the chord in the left hand, the G and then E and so forth. And in the right hand, you're playing the triad on top of that from the key. So you can see we're going to E minor, not E7 here. So if E major, it would be this. But that's not what the melody is. So the melody dictates the quality of the chord. Really nice sound. So play that from the beginning. Really different sound than the first one, but very nice. The other thing that you can do is you can actually use the root of the chord as a grace note, like this. So E and then C, and these are all just kind of grace notes like this. It's an interesting sound. That's a sound they use in gospel music a lot. And you don't have to do it on every note. So for example, if we did it only on a few of them, it would sound like this. Okay, I probably could have played that a little better, but I think you get the idea. Okay, let's move on to the next idea. And this one is going to be based on what we call the sixth diminished scale by Barry Harris. So we've talked about this in other videos and I'm gonna basically give you the idea in a second. I just need to make a screenshot of this before we move on so I can write on the screen. Okay, so the basis of the sixth diminished scale is to play 
major sixth chord. So if we're in the key of C, it's like a C major sixth chord. And then every other note as you're going up the scale is a diminished chord. And you can play the octaves on the outside. And that's where these come from. Now, the first one is not a sixth because you've got a B natural in the melody, but the chord is C major. So you have to play a major chord there. So they're actually a really nice sound. So you've got the octaves on the outside, the chord in the middle. And now it's converting to C6. And now we're going to F6 to G7. And then the last chord is like the diminished chord, this one here, this is a G7 flat nine chord. So if you look at G7 flat nine, this is the diminished chord. So let's play that from the beginning. Now the other thing that you can do there is instead of going to the E minor seventh chord, because the next chord is gonna be A7, is you can actually substitute like a B flat seven sharp 11 chord. So then you can put the C major chord on top, which is the upper structure triad, and then in the left hand, you can do A flat and D, which are the third and the flat seventh of the chord. So the chord is this, really nice chord. So, really, it's like a destination chord, which is kind of cool. Okay, and the last one that I wanted to share with you is a little bit out, but basically it is a fourth idea. So I've written that in here. And the goal here is to take the top note, which is the melody, and play triads with the melody being the third of the chord. So this is a G triad, you can see that. This is an E flat triad. This is a C triad, and this is A flat. And the next one is F, D flat, B flat, and G. And then from that triad, the bottom note, you're gonna go down a fourth from there diatonically. So like that. So if you just follow along with the left hand and you're going down a fourth each time, a perfect fourth. It's a much more modern sound. You can't use it everywhere. But for example, if you're playing the melody a few different times, because there's like two A sections, so you're gonna be playing this three times during one head then each time you might wanna choose a different one because what players tend to do is play the same thing each time. So you might wanna mix it up the first time, play the one from the sixth diminished scale. This is this one here. And then this one is basically force where again, you've got the triad on top and then a perfect fourth from the bottom note. So the distance between that note and that note is a perfect fourth. And again, here I went to the B flat seven sharp 11 chord. All right, let's play them one more time in succession so we can kind of start to hear the difference between each. And the second one where you're just playing triads. And then the third one is the sixth diminished chords. And then the final one is triads over fours.
So as we went through each one, you can see that it gets more and more complex, a little bit more dissonant. The last one being the most dissonant, but definitely a much more modern sound. One other thing that I wanted to point out before we leave this video is that you can use those ideas in obviously different places. Yes, we focused on one specific two bar section of the tune, but as that tune moves forward, there are other places where you can use a combination of each of those. So as we go through this next line, So here we're using a combination of ideas and the first one is starts out with the six diminished chord where you've got this F major seven chord here and then you've got the diminished chord in this particular case it's a let's call it a D diminished chord and the next one is a D minor seventh chord and then you've got the idea where you've got this triad here and a fourth down here the last idea from the section that we talked about. So just putting a root on it. And basically you've got an A flat seven to G seven. So this is the tritone substitution of D seven. So it's a half step above G seven. And then we're getting to a G seven plus five chord. And then you're going to the D flat seven chord, which is the tritone of G7. Okay, let me put a link to this sheet music which gives you those four different ideas for two-handed voicings. I'm gonna put a link up here in the corner and all you have to do is go and give an email address and download that. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and when you subscribe to the channel, just hit the little bell because we'll notify you of all the other upcoming videos that we are making, and we're doing a lot of them. All right, thanks for your time. We'll see you in the next video.